um, and we'll just let people come in as they um, as they arrive. Um, but yeah, so um, today um, I'm Yvonne Gort from the Career Development Centre and um, introducing our two speakers from the College of Education at the University of Otago. Um, we've got uh, Naomi Ingram and Stephen Sexton. Um, so Naomi did a, a Bachelor of Computing and Mathematical Science at Waikato before um, completing a Master's of Industrial Statistics. And that sounds hugely interesting. And it's um, <laughs> Stephen great that you're, you've also worked um, in the carbon plant at the New Zealand Aluminium Smelters because I think just, yeah, sometimes going from school back into school um, and not knowing what's going on out there or, or ha having applied um, mathematics would be really good but um, yeah you've taught um, both in New Zealand and in Oman um, so yeah I mean that's another thing isn't it with the um, teaching degree it can take you around the world um, when it's open um, so now you have done a PhD in mathematics education and you're a lecturer and a researcher at the University of Otago College of Education um, and currently the program coordinator of the secondary education at the college um, and doing research into career choices within STEM. <laughs> That's very really exciting straight up my alley as well. Um, and so um, we've also got Stephen here, and Stephen did a, a Bachelor of uh, Science and Physics um, at Penn State University. Um, and a similar uh, short career in the industry before beginning to teach. And um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Stephen also. Um, did the um, overseas teaching and teaching in Japan. And um, that's, that's a, I, I think, a, a, people just think teaching um, in English, but you were teaching engineers who are going to relocate to America, um, but spoke no English. That must have been incredibly interesting. Um, and after working with them on a daily basis for a year, um, began teaching more and more um, until he undertook a master's of teaching primary education at the University of Sydney. Um, so Stephen um, was asked to continue with a PhD as he was studying how and why men go into primary teaching. Um, females into secondary maths and science, this is all very interesting, isn't it? And mature adults change careers into teaching. So yeah, that was kind of me. Um, so he completed his PhD in 2007 while working full-time as a primary school teacher in South Auckland. That must have been um, a great challenge. Um, before joining, joining us down in Dunedin at the University of Otago in 2010. Um, so over to you guys. Um, take it away. Okay, so I'm going to, um, we've got a bit of a PowerPoint um, presentation. I'm going to share that with you um, in a moment. Um, but before I do, I do have a request that people turn on their cameras if you've got that functionality, because teaching is all about relationships. And guess what? We look at um, your, your uh, there we go. Hello there. And yeah, you, some of you don't have that, um, that capacity on your thing. Some of you can hide behind it and say, oh, look, I don't have that capacity. I'd love to join you. I've just been teaching a class of 90 and I spend most of the first 10 minutes convincing them to turn their videos on so I can see their beautiful smiling faces. Some of you must be, might be going, I can't do it. I'm in pajamas. That's <laughs> absolutely fine. So it's nice to see the couple more we do. So um, I've got a, uh, I'm going to share a um, PowerPoint, but we'll probably be ducking in a little bit out of, in and out of the PowerPoint with you. I'm just going into the share mode here. And what I like about this it means I have total control now over the PowerPoint and Stephen doesn't. So I really like that. Um, so um, Stephen, do you want to take it away for this? Well, you said you had control, so. There right. we go. Right. <laughs> you can start. <laughs> right. Um, basically, we're just, just I'm here as a, t um, I tell all my students um, when they come into the classes, I am a primary school teacher who just now happens to work at the university. I'm a teacher because that's what I teach and that's what I end up doing. Um, I teach because the idea that, I mean, when Yvonne was talking about it, I, I spent several years in industry working for the US Navy. And the first year was great because it was all new. 
And then the second year, just kept doing the same thing. Third year, kept doing the same thing. And I was like, can't, oh, just got bored. Um, and then realized with the fact that when I started teaching was every student's different, every year's different, every class is different. And it was that newness kind of thing. Yes, I was still teaching, but I still got that variety with the fact is that was bringing in new students, seeing new things and experiencing new ideas. Uh, my teaching career started off with adults until I ended up being the head of the junior school in an international school in Thailand, where I taught four-year-olds and spent half my career teaching new entrants with the idea that I was the first teacher any of these students ever had other than possibly their parents or nannies. And so the idea of basically also being a male doing it was brilliant. Um, but the idea that teaching allowed me to basically one, um, like most people who go into teaching as a second career, the idea was to make a difference. Um, to basically allow students to experience the wonders of the world, but also to see that it's what they can do and what their potentials are. And that the idea that it's not, I can't, it's I'm not able to yet. And it's my job to help them do that. So in primary, some of the key years in education is to set them up for the realizing of what they're able to do and to be able to actually build on that so they can keep growing. So the idea behind teaching is it's we make a difference. But our difference is lifelong. Our difference isn't known to most students until they're 10, 20 years down the track, and then they remember what we did and how we did it because everybody remembers those teachers who stand out. We hope it's the teachers who stand out for all the right reasons, and it's not as many for the negative reasons anymore. But teachers, we make a difference. And how we do it determines whether that difference is positive or negative. Okay. Nice. So, I that. so wow, I'm, I'm not even going to try. That was so marvellous. I don't need to add much more. Um, I'm passionate about teaching because I started out at work at the smelter. I was, um, I don't know, back in the day, it was all about teamwork and corporate. And I used to go around the um, Australasia with my little pig um, skin briefcase, often using first class travel. And it was all very corporate and very cool. But I realised that I spent a lot of my time talking about um mathematical concepts with people because they had a lot of key performance indicators. Um, so in the carbon plant, um, they needed to talk about the size of the anode and the height of the anode and the, the composition of the anode. And they had these key performance indicators and then they had to quote the, like the standard deviation. And they, they had been doing that for maybe 20 years, but didn't have real understanding of it. So I found a lot of my time in my job, I was just naturally pulled towards um, teaching people about conceptual understanding about things, mathematics or working as a team or, or some of the management techniques that I've been learning at university. So more and more I was pulled towards that. Um, um, I actually loved my job. I really loved the little pig skin briefcase and the little outfits and things and my hard hat and my, my mask. Um, so I was a bit different from Stephen in that um, my problem was as I married Indiana Jones and he couldn't get a job in Invercargill. In fact, I married such an Indiana Jones that he couldn't get a job anywhere. Um, he's a geologist and um, he'd been working in Papua New Guinea. So I said, look, you get a job and I'll, um, and I'll follow you. So romantic. So anyway, I got a job. And um, he got a job in the Coromandel um, in Whangamatar, actually. I don't know if any of you know it. It's a little surf beach up the Coromandel. And I thought, oh, far out. There's no smelters up there. There's no industrial statistics up there. But there was teaching. And my goodness, I remember, I mean, I really enjoyed my first job, but I went into my teaching job and I never, ever looked back. I, I went my, my talk for 15 years and every single day I went to that classroom with a smile on my face. Sometimes I didn't leave the classroom with a smile on my face, but by the next morning I was ready to go again. And I think it's the relationships that are really important. Um, I taught, being a secondary school maths teacher, I taught 160 kids a year um, all around New Zealand and sometimes in, in, in overseas as well. And, you know, it's, it's, I still have um, people that have come up to me. One of the students I've recently, in the last week, came up to me. I was in the, it was like my first COVID shop after post-COVID shop. And someone said, oh, I know you. You taught me maths. And I remembered their name. Often I don't because there's so many of them. And like they were like 35 years old. And I, I, I know not much younger than me. And I was like, wow, you know, it's really cool. And they were showing me the kids. And so it's just such a wonderful relationship and you are a really important part of their lives whether you're teaching early childhood primary or secondary it's such an important part of your lives and that relationship is really strong and like Stephen said they'll remember you and they'll remember what you did for them 
even if it means that you've been really tough on them or whatever. So, and as for the maths, I mean, God, you can't go past maths teaching. It's awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really passionate about teaching. I'm just going to go on to the next slide and sort of answer that. Stephen's actually already answered that in a little, uh, in a bit too. So what it's like to be a teacher, um, well, I found it really rewarding. Um, it, it is busy, like the first I think it takes a lot of people I find in the secondary field worry about their content knowledge and worry that they don't know everything they should know to be a teacher, even though they've just finished the degree in it. I reckon it took me seven years, my first seven years, to learn what I needed to do to be a teacher and talking about how to teach and the behavior and how to deal with it, making a really positive learning environment and to learn all the maths. Like I thought I knew, I, was all, I thought I was all fancy when it came to the maths, but actually there were some real um, little things you have to learn about what makes an excellence or whatever, whatever the criteria you're using. So there's actually quite a lot of learning there and you don't have to know it all from the start. And you've got all these kind of building of relationships at the same time. So it's, it's, it's very busy, but as time goes, you actually, um, you know, it, it's manageable and um, it's just incredibly rewarding. Do you want to have anything to add about what it's like to be a teacher, the actual job, Stephen? Um, just in most cases, we, I mean, you learn very quickly. The actual content is only a small part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's so much, basically, we tell teachers most of the time, education is built on relationships. Yeah. And it's the fact is basically like even here at the College of Education, there's over 300 primary students and I probably know most of them by first name. Yeah. Because the idea is basically you have to know your students. I mean, we know our students by name. We call them by name. Most of my students call me Steve because the idea that that's basically they're my colleagues um, as I'm helping them in their journey through the teaching education. So we see them on placement. We basically, the whole point is it is nothing more than just a continuous cycle. Of give back and you get in return because I'll get more from them than they'll get from me. And so we realize the fact is content isn't the most important thing, it's the relationship side. So we do work and build on that content, which is why in the master's program, you come into it with a great deal of the content. And then we show you how to actually put that content and what you know into practice. Because teaching is a relationship and you are with students day in, day out. You might not teach 24 seven, but you're on the job pretty much 24 seven. It's actually a real privilege, I think, because often in parent interviews, I used to get the mums or dads come through or the guardians and say, and I'd say, they'd say, oh, how's my boy doing? Or how's my girl doing? And I'd tell them and they go, how do you know all that? They only grunt at me. And I'm so, I always see it as like this really, and now I've got a 15 year old who just grunts at me. So, so I feel like, like it's a real privilege to get to know them because they, they, I often, they sometimes don't, but they often open up to you and it's just such a privilege to be a teacher. Okay, so Stephen, do you want to sort of talk us through this bit? Um, the advantage of the College of Education is, especially for our teacher education programs, is um, we are not the largest teacher education program in the country. But one of the strengths of ours is, is we do everything face-to-face. -face. We have so much of it done with face-to-face -face and the relationship building. But also the fact is, we have one of the longest histories of teacher education in this country. Um, it is cutting edge. We do basically everything changes. Uh, people who've been in the program, it's not exactly year in, year out. It's not repetitive. We change things. We add things as we learn and grow as well. Um, we do build a great deal around relationship building and building that relationship, not only between us and students, but between students and students. And the idea that basically realizing, especially in our master's program, we tell them on day one, the only way you're going to get through this program is the people who are sitting around you right now. Because it's basically that relationship building of when you need help, they need to be there to support you and you need to be there to support them. And so we do take it from the idea that there isn't just one teacher out there and there isn't just one type of teacher. We do need a variety and we do need to be able to reflect the teaching population as well as what's out there and that people come in. So while we have entry requirements, we also take the idea that nobody's born a teacher. It is a job that you have to work very hard at and learn very good at, but there are dispositions that help people be better teachers. So our program, especially for the master's program, because you're all coming from degrees, is we build on what you know, but then we also show you what you know is only the beginning and it will just keep growing. Yep. So um, in most cases, um, in most cases you're already coming because you already have a degree. Um, in that means you can come into our Master of Teaching and Learning program, which is a one-year 
course taught 180 point degree program that this year started on January 10th, but will end on December 18th. So you get a master's degree in one year, but you do a master's level of work in that year. So it is full on, but we do build it around the school calendar, but we can do it in early childhood. Those people who want to work with people who are from birth up to about five or six years old, because you can go into kindergartens as well in early childhood. If you want to look at primary, you're looking at students who could be from five up to 13. That's what we look at in the primary range. And then secondaries can be those students, depending on whether they're full secondaries or start in year seven or year nine, but secondary is looking at those students who go into the secondary subjects. So there is a little bit of flexibility between these, but it also depends on you are getting a degree in one of these three areas and you can't get a degree in both or any of the three. It has to be one of the three. So you choose the program you want to apply to and then that's where you get your degree. In the Master of Teaching and Learning, there are six compulsory papers. You must take all six, three in semester one, three in semester two. Every cohort, early childhood, primary, secondary, has their own curriculum throughout the whole year. You have your own teaching placements throughout the whole year, but the whole group comes together for one paper in semester one and one paper in semester two, because a lot of what we do builds on what each other does. So we do talk about what early childhood does because that prepares for primary and primary prepares for secondary. So secondary needs to know where students are coming from and early childhood needs to know where students are going. So we need to work together because education is lifelong and they do need to build together. So it does allow students to get this degree in one year. You could easily do a whole nother bachelor's degree, but it would be required a whole nother bachelor's degree because our undergraduate for early childhood and primary requires you 18 of the 20 papers are compulsory. So coming to us with a degree already means you can get this in one year by having to do a whole nother undergraduate degree and do it over three. So the key part of this in education is we do need you to learn to develop how to think critically and what that means to develop critical thinking and those professional skills. You're coming with the knowledge that you already know how to study. So you're already good students. We're gonna show you how to be a good learner now. So you've got the skills, now we need to turn that into professional skills on how to be a teacher. So we will look at things like human development. We will look at learning. We will look at policy. We will look at advanced education. So there is theory in this program, but it is also grounded in practice. You go from practice to theory, theory to practice, because you have to put the two together. This is not just an academic degree, but it's not an on-the-job training program either. It is both. So Master of Teaching and Learning in Early Childhood, all ours are one year. You must come in with an academic degree. You have to have a 360-point academic degree. And when we say B plus in your major, so no matter what you're studying, we look at your three and or 400 level papers for that major. And it needs to be a 75% grade average. There is a little bit of flexibility to depend on what's going on because it's a master's level course. We need to know students can do the master's level work. If the grade is the only thing that people can achieve, we can potentially look at some uh, variations on that, but we don't want to enroll students in a program that they academically just can't keep up with. The same requirements are going to be for the primary degree. Early childhood, they'll put you in under twos and then three to five year olds. So you'll spend across two or three different age groups. In primary, you'll have at least two school placements, one from five to year four, so new entrance up to year four, and another placement year five to year eight. So you have to see the different age range. And then basically going from there, so once again, Primary, we cover the whole curriculum, so your undergraduate degree can be in anything. That's just a skill set you bring. So whether it comes in with a science degree, a technology degree, humanities degree, that just brings extra skills. We will still cover all learning areas in the primary degree. 
So in um, secondary, which is um, my area, I actually work in the primary um, program as well. So I'm very fond of it, but I, I, my main background is in secondary. Um, so yeah, the only way to get a secondary qualification to be a secondary school teacher in at Otago is through a Masters of Teaching and Learning, the one year one. So if you want to do primary or early childhood, there's a choice between a three year undergraduate degree or the Masters. Um, but I think for a lot of you, you, you're more interested in the Masters. And so that's a one year qualification and um, Stephen's explained what that one year means. Um, so it's really important um, what you've done your undergraduate degree in. So we have sometimes people wanting to be a secondary school teacher, but they've done all psychology or something like that. And that's not actually related to a particular teaching subject. So it's really important for the secondary that you actually really plan your degree towards coming. Uh, the B plus average, um, we find that um, we we actually, if, if you haven't quite got to a B average, we'll interview you. And if you're really good, we can apply for exemption. We do need it to be a B plus average or thereabouts because of the, um, you know, it's a master's level degree. But we find that for some of our subjects that we particularly need um, teachers in, like physics and maths and things like that, it's really hard sometimes to get a B plus average um, in some of those final year papers, depending on the nature of them. So, so we do take that into account when we're doing it, but we, you know, do as well as you can in your undergraduate degree. Um, so it is a non, as Stephen's explained about, it's a non-standard academic year. So when they talk about a year to do it, it's not like your usual um, February to October deal. Um, so in, in secondary, we have a little bit of a different system. Um, we have from primary and early childhood, we go out for one block near the beginning of the year. So one week. And so that's just to orientate yourselves. Everyone thinks they're an expert on secondary schools because it's not long since they were there, but it's really good to go back and observe a school, maybe a school quite different to the one that you went to when you were younger. Um, so a one week block, just to kind of observe from a different perspective, what or how a secondary school operates. And then you'll do a six week block um, in term two, which if you might remember, that's around just after Easter, around thereabouts, and then depending on where Easter is, of course, and then a seven week, week block near the beginning, uh, sort of five weeks into semester two. Um, so for secondary, um, we, 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 I'm not, I'm using the word require here, I'll explain a little bit more. We really would like you to go out of um, Dunedin for one of those blocks. And so we're particularly interested in you having a placement in the Lower South Island, um, partly because, um, for all sorts of reasons, one, because we want you to see a range of schools. Uh, we're really proud at the College of Education because we're not just, um, we, we, we um, graduate students who have a real range of subject experience, but we graduate students who can, can teach in a real range of um, environments. Some people are not able to go outside of Dunedin um, for um, that professional experience block because of childcare or something or health reasons. But in general, we really, I'm using the word push, we really encourage you <laughs> to go outside of Dunedin. It is really tricky um, because you have to, um, it is really tricky often for that placement outside of Dunedin. And I will give you a heads up right from the beginning. It's something you need to think about because, um, you know, you, you're, sub you're subject to the costs of food, well, food you'd be paying anyway, but rent, often it's really tricky because you're already paying rent in Dunedin. So we, um, you can stay with family or friends, or um, we've got a number of sort of hostel places that in different um, school hostels that we can get you in. And sometimes there's just a very small fee for those, but you have to be aware that, that that's a situation for secondary. Sometimes they come to the program and get a bit of a fright when it comes to that. So that's why I thought I'd mention it. Everybody who wants to do, be a secondary school teacher is really passionate about their subjects and their content. And um, the very first thing I will say to you, and you'll, you'll remind me of this when you come, listen to me already expecting you, um, is that um, we don't teach mathematics or we don't teach chemistry, we teach students. So that's sort of the message that Stephen's already given. So just for an example, here is, um, so for chemistry, I'm looking at the bottom one first, to, to, to have, it's not about majors and minors within a degree, it's more about what papers you've done. So to become a secondary school chemistry teacher, as a prerequisite, you need to have done one 300 level um, paper supported by a body of 100 and 200 level papers. One of the most frequently asked questions I got get asked is, 
what does a body of papers mean? And I'll be honest, if you've got a, if you've got a, a really good background in something, a body could mean the minimum of one 100 and one 200 level with a 300 level, but that would be an absolute minimum. And maybe that would be with some other experience or something like that. So goodness, apply anyway. And, but a body means, means like a, a group of papers that are chemistry related. But like I said, you, you might be able to get away with a minimum of one, 100, one, 200, one, 300 level, but that would be a minimum. Same with Digitech, um, Digitech listen to me, just using the lingo. Um, sometimes if you're interested in drama or something like this, um, I think you're more of a science techie types. Um, you actually only have to do to 200 level paper, but all of that information is, is, is on the website. So have a really good look at that. And I get loads of questions about it and it's really quite technical. Here's an interesting thing you may not know is that you actually graduate endorsed in secondary education. So on your certificate or if you're on your, what do we call it? Degree, degree. Um, you won't actually get it that you're going to be a physics teacher or something. It's actually just endorsed in secondary school education. And actually, you're allowed to apply. You could be a maths physics person, but apply for a Japanese um, thing. So you actually, you actually, um, what you do at college doesn't necessarily mean what you need to apply for out there. Of course, it's highly encouraged by principals that you've got the background. Um, so you're actually not endorsed in a particular subject, you're endorsed in secondary education. So it's quite generalized. But we're really keen that what you um, have done in your background of your degree, the prerequisites is what you can do on practice in this course and what you can do. So we've actually got um, 32 curriculum lecturers within one course. Um, Stephen was saying about there's six papers in the degree and two of them are related to curriculum. And within those two um, papers, you'll be split up and there's 30 different lecturers teaching different what's called teaching subjects. So a full program is actually three teaching subjects. So for example, if you're a chemistry person, it could be that you're doing junior science chemistry and then there's a really extra lovely paper there called senior science that kind of covers a whole lot of different sort of senior science subjects such as ag and hort um, and um, earth and space science geology things like that or so the other thing I should add about that is um, a full program is three teaching subjects you're actually allowed to add in one more teaching subject um, and we can discuss that when you come for an interview um, and that could be like if you want to do um, be a, a physics teacher with some science but you actually always almost you want to teach maths as well so it just gives you that extra option you'll see all the detail I won't go into any more detail about it but you'll see that in the in the information that is supplied I thought I'd share with you, um, so we were hoping, we, well, no, we weren't hoping, I actually told them not to. Some students wanted to come on, who are in the current degree, wanted to come on with you, but right now, they're um, all, all um, I keep calling them covid it up, they're doing all these things because of COVID and applying for all sorts of things, and um, they've got assignments due. So I said, send me some quotes of why I should get people to do this course, and I was amazed. These are just coming overnight, um, and you can see already, what Stephen's been talking about. Um, you can see already that it's about relationships, it's about passion, and it's about um, the sense of community. So um, I was really stoked to get these. Stephen hasn't seen these, so I'm hoping he's pleased with them too, because- Read them um, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know who all these people are, yeah. I know, and so actually, Stephen, I've got about 20 of these. I'm gonna send them around the staff, because I reckon we all need a bit of a pick-me-up. And so the love, the aroha, that we, we got from these students in the last 24 hours when I just asked that question, why should they do an end teaching at Otago? I mean, I know we're amazing, but it was really awesome. So this is from the student's voice. I only changed a couple of uh, uh, apostrophes. <laughs> so so um, that's really neat. Uh, and um, so all of these, and I particularly choose, chose a lot of science students in here, um, though we've, I've snuck a drama one in there as well. Um, so, so there's some real mix of things. Adam's a chemistry uh, teacher. Daniel's physics, uh, Lyra's biology, Natalie's biology. So it just shows those, those real, um, we've got quite a lot of science uh, people doing this. And um, so Natalie, for example, she takes um, biology with science and then the senior science subject. Lyra does biology, science, senior science, but she's also added in a maths paper. So she does four papers. Adam down there is doing, um, he's, all about, um, he's all about chemistry. 
Um, and Daniel is, he's interesting because he's physics, but he also likes a bit of classics as well. So it, he's quite an interesting character. Dr uh, Catherine is your basic drama. She's amazing. She's an English drama um, teacher and she's going to be awesome. So that, that, they're just an example of some of the students that we've got and we're so lucky to have. I mean, we really are like a family, like Catherine says. Um, when you apply, um, there's a um, online application that you can do. And if you go onto our website and through the College of Education, you'll be able to see that online. Um, if you've got any uh, queries around it, there should be a question, a place to ask or just ask um, us as course coordinators or you'll see our information on the website. One thing that catches everyone every year is that a lot of people don't think about applying um, until they get to near the end of the year. But actually, especially for secondary, uh, the applications close at the end of the 31st of July. Occasionally, um, the, um, the date can be changed if we don't have enough applications or we don't have the quality that we want or things like that. But, but Stephen's shaking his head. I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> but I know that's the case. No, no. For the undergraduate maybe for the masters, it's almost always overprescribed. Yeah, so for, for, for secondary, uh, the year before last, for example, we only could take half of the people that applied. So do get it in, and, and that is only, we were only, that's the half that applied before the 31st of July. So it's high stakes in terms of um, highly competitive, um, in terms of entry, but it's, it's not about how fancy your grades are necessarily, though that's an, a factor. It's about, so practice your interview skills because you will be interviewed. Um, we invite you for an interview, and then uh, you chat to us, which is wonderful. Um, and then we, oh, Stephen, see, this is all about relationships. He's got to keep up with his people. So if you're successful, um, we will then offer you a place, and then we place you in schools for the following year. Um, so that's sort of applying. And when we're doing the interview, it really is, um, and you probably see me there if you're coming for secondary, um, we really are looking for your sort of, pay, we want you to mention kids. So it's not all about, oh, I really love chemistry and I really like, you know, when, you know, the Bunsen burner flames up and that's really cool that you're passionate about that. But we want to hear, hey, I want to explain things to children or, or young adults. Um, really think about how, who you're going to be asking for referees. Um, it's, um, they've got to know you really well and, and wish you well as well. Um, and really understand what the job of teaching does. And what the teaching job of teaching involves. It's really tricky at the moment to get into schools and you may not have this opportunity before you get interviewed this year if you are thinking of applying. Um, but it's really great to spend time in an educational setting, not just say, hey, yeah, I used to go to school. I know all about what a school looks like. So, you know, visit a school if you can. Um, you might be in your own hometowns at the moment or what. But like I said, we're going to really understand that you may not have been able to do that this year. It's really unusual times. Um, so work experience is helpful, but not required, but we're mostly looking for your passion for teaching young adults and your passion for whatever it is that you, you've been doing in your degree as well. Um, the other thing is, is that it's really expensive. Um, we're really aware of that. Um, a master's of teaching and learning as a one year degree, it's a master's level qualification. So it's a master's level type of, um, type of fees. So that costs about twelve and a half thousand dollars to do. So the other thing is, is because it's postgraduate, um, you don't get, you're not uh, eligible for student allowances. Um, this means that um, it can be really tricky for some people. So a lot of people do do a small amount of work. You can't do too much work um, because I'm talking, you all have to work, but you can't paid work because it's quite a full on course. So anybody doing more than about Ooh, like, like 10 hours a week is even pushing it, I reckon. Um, it's quite a full-on course. But there are these really neat uh, teaching Ed scholarships, uh, particularly for people in, in science, um, engineering, maths, and te reo, actually. Um, so, but right across, have a go at them. They're, they're, they're um, on the Teach NZ. So Teach NZ is the um, Teachers' Council website. So, so yeah, that, that information's on there. We, we don't sort of deal with a lot of that ourselves, but have a look at scholarships to support you um, to do that. And I think that's, that's all that in terms of the, um, I'll just stop the share because that's, and we can just get back together as a, oh, look at you all. Hello. 
Lovely to see you, Amelia and Jessica, two Jessicas. That must be a good sign. Um, and Sarah and Cameron Lee, Lana and Mirabella. Lovely. So um, here we all are. And sort of that's our kind of plug, if you like. So any questions at all, any concerns, any things you want to talk about, go for it. Um, I have a question. Um, firstly, great about Coromandel. My parents are actually there at the moment, so no, I do know the place. <laughs> Love it. Um, I was just, does it matter, like, obviously I know there's like a date when you've got to apply, but does it matter how long after you've finished a bachelor's degree? Like, could you go off, get a job, do whatever, and then come back 10 years later and decide to apply and still use we've had 52 year olds apply who haven't oh. done degree since they were 21 so cool. <laughs> yeah that's absolutely fine in fact awesome. we encourage that's what i did can't be wrong <laughs> perfect 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 awesome thank you hey guys i just have a oh no you go <laughs> Sorry, I have a question. Um, what's the minimum amount of referees that we need to submit? Is it one, two, two? Part of the application will say you need to submit this application to two referees. Some people do more, but basically it depends on how long it takes referee reports in. These are referees, these are people who can talk about who you are as a person. They don't have to be teachers. And it's not about you being a teacher. It's asking how are you... How do you deal with other people? How are you dealing with other cultures? How do you do respond to this kind of thing? So it's asking about your personality and who you are as a person, not as a teacher. So the referees can be almost anybody as long as they can talk about who you are. And then one of the part of the referee says, do they think you should be placed in front of children? Idea to kind of say, would they, put, would they see you as a teacher kind of thing? And so that comes part of the application. So it's two referees minimum, some people will do a couple of more, depends on how long it may take people to do the application, because you invite them to be the referee and then they send us the report. And so sometimes we have to chase people up going, this referee has not replied. And so they may try to get one or two more and then we get extras as well. So it's two is required, more than two is not so bad. Yeah, you don't have to run out and go and get you don't have to run out and go and get, oh, I'll show them four then. <laughs> it's not like when I applied for, this, for, for something else. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, okay, you had another question, other Jessica? Yeah, hello. Um, I was just wondering, because I've done, like, tried to start applying through eVision, but I noticed on the website as well, you have to submit, um, like, letters. Does that, do you submit them through the eVision process or do you submit them separately? I think so. Um, I think so. I actually, one of the um, one of the joys of being a lecturer, because I've been here for about seven years now, and I have it's been a while since I did it. I almost have to go onto the um, eVision and have a go at applying myself, so I can see there might be some curly little things that I'm not sure of. So I think from from what I understand, you have to submit everything yourself. But I'm not a hundred percent sure. But Stephen's nodding, and he knows way more than me about most things in life. Most things. <laughs> So yeah, I think you have to you can you can attach that to your um, application. Um, okay. One of the things we ask for is a handwritten statement on why you want to be a teacher because we're looking at spelling, punctuation, and grammar as well. Because we ask, yes, the computers are all over schools and everything, but teachers still have to be able to read and write, and so we want to know why you want to be a teacher, but also we want to know that you can actually write and that it's actually legible and that your spelling and punctuation and grammar is there because that's still important no matter what you teach and what year you teach. So ideally, type it up and look at all the green and red squiggles on your computer and then handwrite it out clean. And then basically you can just scan it and send it in as well. That's not really part of the creative process, Stephen. <laughs> it's, it's planning and being intelligent as you do things. Because it's, it's true, we need people to write. You know, wait till you see what people write on board still today. Oh, yeah. Right. I talked to my students and tried to get them to understand or explain the difference between a metaphor and a simile today. And they're looking at me and I went, your final year primary teachers, half of you taught this when I was visiting you. Remember what you taught. And it's getting them to remember that, yes, they still have to remember this stuff. Right? Yeah. So, and then I could hear them typing Google the answer. And I was like, oh, you got the answer. Brilliant. Read it. Tell me. <laughs> So the other thing is, is that if, if say, grammar is not your strong point and um, you, you are worried about that aspect of things, we do um, 
actually this assess you um test is the wrong word here we actually assess you when you come in to see if you actually need some support with that so it's not like a deal breaker it's like hey Cameron Lee's amazing she interviewed really well everything's on track but she needs I'm not saying this is true Cameron Lee I've got no idea <laughs> with your spelling of your name I'm sure you've got it sorted um, so so actually she might need some support with us so it's a really it's a very nurturing environment for that sort of thing obviously we've got to have some kind of gatekeepers but it's like hey you know this person just needs a little bit more support So what are, what are you all doing? Are you like uh, uh, are you like uh, end of, end of final year or yeah nodding nodding no Lana how old are you are you um, I'm in my second year so oh. I've got another year of my degree to go before I actually so what are you doing I'm a major in chemistry and oh. then I have to do a bit of biochemistry as well and a wow. bit of other random biology papers. Okay, so biochemistry is quite popular this year, I think. I've had quite a yeah. few people write to me about Anyone else biochemists? No, I've had about two blokes to me write to me this morning about biochemistry. Any other questions? Okay. All right, I think I think they might be all right then. One of the things that you might want to consider too is um, we're really lucky in um, one thing that is more prominent perhaps at the College of Education than might be um, in other areas that you might be working in the university is that we're really, really lucky in New Zealand that we enjoy this real neat bicultural partnership with uh, Māori people, uh, with, with our Māori partners in this world and so um, that's really um, we, we really um, encourage you to come along to the interview having thought about that bicultural partnership that we have with between Māori and European New Zealanders if you like or just the whole of New Zealand and and we want you to kind of really think about that and you might not know a lot about it but having that knowledge of and an openness to learning more is really important. Um, it's really important because our Māori students in schools, um, they need to be able to achieve as Māori. So we need them to be achieving well at school and being themselves or being Māori. And so that's a real um, important thing. And when you see some of the statistics around um, our Māori learners, you'll really understand why we need to do this because we all think we're doing well at it, but it's not getting there yet. So um, that's something you might, and you might simply not have that background, but become prepared to go, oh, I want to find out all about that. And what are those statistics and what can we do? Okay, so that's just a, something that you might want to think about a little bit coming into Teachers College, College of Education. Sorry, Teachers College is the old fashioned way. I'd be wrapped over the knuckles if Stephen heard that. Anything else at all? You know, that's Stephen, that's because we explained everything so beautifully. So I, I, I take that as a win. That's an absolute win. Hey, don't hesitate. So hands up if you are interested in secondary. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> You're out of here. Well, you'll be very pleased to know that Stephen is one of our great lecturers in the secondary program. <laughs> so <laughs> even though he's more primary in many ways, in many ways <laughs> he is one of our lecturers and so you actually have come along here and you'll get both of us so hey that's really cool and um, my um, email is just naomi.ingram you can see my name there at otago.ac.nz so don't hesitate to ask me any email me ask me questions about anything you might have and that, that you can start already forming a relationship which is just fantastic it is. Is there, is there anyone else that, um, Stephen, did you want to finish off with anything before we um, close up here? Oh, I'm done. I'm fine. You're done. Good. Yep. So, um, yeah, so I suppose as well, um, if you need any help with your application or with um, interviewing technique, that's something that the Career Development Centre can support you with. Um, so you're welcome to uh, make an appointment um, for a Zoom meeting, um, a one-on-one, -on -one, um, to talk about your options. But um, yeah, for those of you that weren't here um, at the beginning, um, 
yeah, I did a, a teaching degree too. So it's a very transferable qualification and um, highly recommend it uh, as well. So yeah, um, always a great idea to um, find out as much information as possible um, about your, um, you know, your, your next step and where you're going. Um, and it's great to be able to have uh, people that you can contact, um, you know, to ask very specific questions. Um, so that, that's great, Naomi and Stephen, that, you know, you're available to do that. And um, because sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's little things that you remember afterwards or when mum says to you, oh, did you ask about this? You think, oh, I, don't know, I forgot about that. Um, I sent my son to school this morning with about three questions like that. <laughs> yeah. Mums are great at that. Well, oh, dads are great at that too. So, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, make sure that um, you don't be shy about coming forward and asking as much information as what you need. Um, to make that step, but yeah. Okay, so great for you all to be here today and um, thanks very much for showing up and, um, and showing up personally with your camera open and um, yeah, all the best for the rest of the day. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cool. Thank you. That's great. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't know if you want um, the details of the students at all or... Um, it probably... Oh, go on, send them because that's, that's quite useful if they come for interviews and I'll just um, kind of remember them if they have issues or... Because um, we really... You know, sometimes we get ones who sometimes don't interview as well, but we know they're super keen and we kind of can offer them a second interview or something. Because right. like, I had one that emailed me, you know, three or four times throughout her career, her, her degree, by the time she got to me, she, like for the interview, she was beside herself because she cared so much. Exactly. So, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and so we, we interviewed her again and she was fine after that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes, yeah, if they've never had an interview before, um, it, it's even more stressful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. But it is. I'd like to say we're quite friendly in that, but it is yeah, yeah. any interview like that is, is a judgment. And I didn't so. didn't like to tell them the other thing. We we assess them on their literacy, their mathematics, and their um, te reo soon when they come in. So um, <laughs> it's quite scary. But I don't mention that till we get them in the door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, nice to meet you. And um, thank you. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.